question for Coach? Bob, you went uh, with Daquan and um, Kamani a little bit more. Will that affect your starting lineup going forward, or will you go back to what you I mean, it's just going to be it by feel and, and who's going well. And uh, you know, I told the team, you know, particularly Daquan, the way he played the last seven or eight minutes of the game, I couldn't take him out of the game. You know, he just uh, he had an impact with, with the dunks and, and uh, protecting the basket and uh, just playing with great energy. So, you know, we uh, we got we need to try and uh, play whoever is giving us the best chance to win that particular game, and that's kind of. You know, the minutes are going to be determined by, by who's playing well, and, and that's kind of the formula that we'll have going forward with our bench. And both those Bayer entries are pretty big, too. I mean, physical up front, would, would that factor in? Yeah, I mean, I'm just concentrating on Stanford right now. They're, they're playing as well as anyone in the league, and their, their record shows that. They've won four in a row. They've won two on the road. They've beat two, two very good teams at home. Uh, they've won dramatically, you know, so they have something going right now, and they're uh, Good size, really good size across the front court. You know, six eight, six eight, six ten. So, got to be ready to, to protect the paint and rebound. I thought that was one of the keys. And in our win versus Oregon State, we were you know, we were losing the paint in the first half, and, and it was a complete turnaround in the second half. I, I thought our guards were were attacking uh, more and uh, and not settling. And, and uh, you know, we got to we got to be the aggressor. Coach, after the game, you said the team goes through highs and lows in every season. How are they going to answer back on Wednesday? Well, it's 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 a big game, and uh, you know they're uh, they're leading conference right now at the moment. So, and we're two and three. So, uh, that's got to be enough motivation. And uh, we played a bunch of games on the road, non-conference uh, in the league already. So, we're used to to big games and tough games. And this will this won't be any different. How do you guys adapt to teams slowing down the pace? Well, I mean, we just, uh, you know, we have to keep pressure on the ball. We got to get stops. You know, we got to get, you know, if teams are going to go deep in the clock, then we got to, we got to shut them out. And we got to, you know, then we got to rebound. So we didn't, uh, I didn't think we did that as well, uh, you know, against Oregon. You know, we were giving up too many second chance points after they would, uh, you know, wind the clock down on us. But uh, yeah, we just, if we, if we get the stops, then we can get out in the open court and, uh, and make plays early before we have to uh, go against a set defense. Coach, what would you accredit this kind of slump back and forth, up and down to? I just don't think that, you know, the, college basketball is different. This, you know, we're not like the Warriors or something, you know. I mean, this is, uh, you know, the uh, Michigan State, you know, that's a good example. They, uh, they lost, lost about 20 on the road. Uh, at Ohio State as the number one team in the country. They went back home and, and played Rutgers in overtime, uh, and then they went out and, and lost again. So it's, it, you know, things happen, you know, uh, it's, it's fragile. You, uh, you know, you want to preserve it when, when you're going well, and, and, uh, and then when you face some adversity, then you gotta, you gotta find, uh, find your gear again, and, and hopefully uh, we'll get that done soon. How does Shannon differ as a leader compared to like Trey and Cody? I mean, Shannon's uh, you know very fiery. You know, he's uh, you know when he's uh, when he's playing well, you know he's uh, he's very fearless, and, and uh, you know all three of those guys you know want to win. They're all winners, uh, but but Shannon's really you know vocal and and, and maybe more emotional uh, than, than than Trey and Cody. Is there anything about Shannon that reminds you of you of when, when you were playing? I, I think just his uh, his commitment. You know, he plays both ends of the floor. He uh, you know, he defends, he takes the defensive end personal, and then uh, you know, he's got a knack for just, just making big shots, very timely shots. Uh, we're very, I mean, Shannon and I are very different types of players. He's, he's a way better athlete than I ever was, uh, you know, I, and, and I was maybe more of a, a pass-first guard than, than he is. He's got such an ability to score, and, uh, but, but I think the one common denominator is, is uh, his, his late key shots. He's hit some big shots, you know, for for not only Arizona State but in Buffalo for me as well. What did you see? You said Daquan made it hard for you to take him off the court. What was he doing to put himself in that position? Yeah, I just think he was, you know, he was up for the challenge, you know, in the paint, and uh, you know, he he had some some impact on on altering shots, and uh, and then he was finishing, you know, with authority when when uh, the ball was given to him. You know, he made some free throws, so. Kind of did a little bit of everything, and uh, you know he's. Uh, you know I just didn't feel like it was uh, it was necessary to, to make a change with him. Coach, you've always known that Trey could be uh, this good. I mean, she recruited him. 
What, uh, how does it feel to see like your one of your star players get the recognition, national recognition that he's gotten this past week? You're talking about Trey. Yes. Yeah, Trey has uh, you know been big for us uh, for the program. You know, he'll be uh, one of the guys that, that is uh, a big part of turning, uh, you know, changing the narrative here. And, and uh, you know, in the big games this year, he's, he's delivered every one of them. Uh, Xavier and, and and Kansas and at Arizona, all big big scoring games and some of our biggest games. And uh, he just made, you know, he's gotten so much better over the years and. Uh, got such a great future ahead of him after this year as well. Coach, you mentioned the bench production a little bit earlier, 27 points against Oregon State. How important will that be uh, for you guys to get similar production down the stretch? We, we have the capability of, of getting it. And, uh, you know, the seniors have been great, and they're going to get their fair share. But, uh, you know, the guys coming off the bench, uh, Romello, uh, Mickey, I think that there's, there's a number of guys that, that could have a great impact on our team not only scoring, but you know, taking charge of Vitaly Scheibel's charge in the second half, um, plays like that, uh, you know, deflections, tip-ins, uh, you know, all the things that, that you need your bench to do, and, and guys playing their role, you know, to the best of their ability. And where have you seen sort of Kamani at as, as he's coming back and playing some more significant minutes? You know, Kamani just was, uh, you know, he had the nice drive late in the game, which was important. You know, I thought he's, uh, his defense was solid. He was doing nothing to, for, for me to say, I need to put someone else in. You know, he, uh, he was just allowing the game to come to him and uh, seeing that more and more. So uh, it was great for him to, to be a part of that unit down the stretch that, that closed that game out. I think that that could uh, to give him some confidence. Did you feel that was the first game? Kimani really wasn't pressing, really letting the game come to him. I think that, that was the first game he let them do that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, look, I, it's not fair to Kamani uh, what has happened just in terms of the, the timeliness of, of the injury and losing the whole non-conference. And, you know, for a freshman, that's that's not easy. And then to, to start your, your your Pac-12 on the road and, and, and tough games, uh, it, it was he seemed more comfortable out there. And uh, as he gets more repetitions and more practice time and more games under his belt, I, I would assume that he'd continue to develop. How important is this development to the team's progression as a whole, especially during this conference stretch? He's just a guy that fits in, and he's not a guy that's needy. And uh, he's uh, a team guy. He'll uh, he'll play his role. He'll do whatever you know, we ask him to do. He's going to defend. He'll rebound. You know, he'll move without the basketball, and, uh, and you know, just make you know, he's a good pa underrated passer. So, just does a lot of little things that uh, that add up to a lot. And. Uh, and I think he'll continue to develop uh, as the year goes on. Coach Reed, Travis is averaging over 20 points a game for Stanford. How are you going to try to slow him down on defense a little bit? Well, I mean, a lot of teams have struggled with that question. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a low down there. He's, he's physical. He's uh, experienced. You know, he's showing more, uh, more perimeter game than, than in the past. You know, he's, I, I don't know what his numbers exactly are, but I would imagine he gets to the free throw line as much or more than anyone because of uh, how physical he plays. And, uh, you know, they're a balanced team. They're not just one-dimensional. They're, uh, you know, Humphreys is, is another guy that, that uh, you know, can shoot it and, and can play around the basket. And, and getting Pickens back has been, uh, uh, you know, a game-changer for them in the league. And they're not the team that they were in the non-conference with, with him. And Apollo is another freshman that's got a nice nice game. and uh, and. Uh, you know, he's got size and moves great out there and stuff. So they, and, and Davis, I mean, Davis is, uh, you know, has, has changed the dynamics of them at the point. So they're, uh, they got a lot of good things going for them right now. Uh, it, you guys had such a good rhythm and chemistry earlier in the year, and then you bring back Mickey, who's a, a big player, and then you bring back Kamani. Is it challenging when you bring back players a month, two months into the season to kind of find everybody, get back everybody into a rhythm and define roles and all that? I mean, you go through that. It's 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 certainly uh, something that that I've I wouldn't say struggled with, but but like it's just been a challenge to try and push the right buttons uh, all the time. And I felt like uh, when the rotation was a little tighter, it was a little simpler on on me to to distribute minutes. And uh, so it's you know we just got to come together. And, and and when you're out on the floor, you got to try and maximize your minutes. And uh, when there's when there's 
enough guys, there's also competition, and and uh, and there's other guys that you could go to if players, you know, are not given max effort or not playing at the highest level. So I think that's the one positive when you have a bench and you have depth now we have, and and also you know foul trouble now. There's there's more options if if, uh, if, if those things would, would take place. So um, there if there's there's a trade-off. There's positives and negatives to both. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.